When it came to axing a lot of people, Phil Spencer did not lie. He just used specific language. You see, 3% of Microsoft Gaming's global workforce just lost their jobs. And that makes it seem small. Only 3%. Global workforce. It feels diffuse. It feels more like me cutting 70 calories a day, which I should probably do. But the thing is, the layoffs are not diffuse. They're targeted. And if you work at Blizzard Entertainment, well, your chances are far worse than 3%, because 3% of Xbox gaming is a lot of people, if it's only happening, at ABK. So that's our first big point. The second point, then, is spin. And that's because emerging staff reports do somewhat clash with the memo that was issued by Microsoft under Spencer's name. And of course, all beautifully timed ahead of their next reporting period. You see, big picture, Microsoft are saying that all of this stuff, all these layoffs, they were planned before the merger, that the merger had no impact on these layoffs. Hell, they argued to the Federal Trade Commission that ABK would be a limited integration studio. That means less integration, so less layoffs and that kind of thing. They literally said this sort of thing would not happen. And when we literally see Xbox got the ABK support network and handle those functions themselves, well, it's rather suspicious. And that means we've got stuff to break down. Number one, layoffs. Number two, games. Number three, what staff who have been given the boot have said. And number four, the thing I'm going to do first, the big bit of news that just dropped. Because uh, <laughs> don't we all love big tech? And look, we are here on YouTube, kind of playing into the maze. So I'm building alternative for the future. It's Bellular.Games. Over there, right? We've got exclusive content like Loading Screen, which is our daily publication that keeps you in in the loop without exposing you to distractions and apps and all of those things that just make life worse. You also get all of our content ad-free. You often get it early, along with the research reports that these videos are built on, as well as, of course, our member community on Discord. Basically, I don't want to be limited by YouTube. I want to make an awesome experience for you, and that's at Bellular.Games. The buyback. This is what happened just before I went to record this video. They announced a massive stock buyback and a 10% increase to their dividend. Now, I'm not going to get into financial nerd stuff. Point is, the rub here. They're spending money to juice up their stock price and giving a larger dividend to their shareholders. And so it almost feels like a paradox. On the one hand, they're aggressively cost-cutting staff. It almost seems like Xbox are cash-strapped and barely able to compete with Sony. Meanwhile, they're spending loads of money on buybacks and they're doing larger dividends for their shareholders. But the point is, everyone, this is not a paradox. It is the system. The buyback is not because 650 people got no. deleted. It demonstrates how the end entity that they work for operates at the highest level and what its goal is, and that goal is shareholder value. That is the number one objective of the board. And with that in mind, let's talk about Phil and the layoffs. Off the top of your head, how many layoffs do you think Xbox Gaming has had this year? And is it more or less than the actual number of 2,550? Because that's how many are gone. Phil's memo basically says this is them aligning their post-acquisition team structure. And he says there's no cuts to games, to devices, or experiences, and then game file sources report that none of of the business unit leaders at Xbox or its affiliated gaming teams will be hit. Instead, it says that most cuts are at the corporate and support role but we should actually examine that wording because the sources say none of the business unit leaders are hit and there are no cuts to games. Those are specific words. They say nothing of the staff in those business units. And as you're about to see, yeah, actually some games are being impacted. Two games are struggling most and they're ones you likely won't shed a tear for. They are Warcraft Rumble and Warzone Mobile. Specifically, Stephen Totillo reports that Warcraft Rumble is moving to post-launch live ops and that Warzone was not as big as they hoped. But that's not the only impact in games. So Variety say that Warzone staff will be shuffled around and Rumble is basically Blizzard's decision. And on this, I'm honestly not that surprised. I mean, the big hits, COD Mobile and, I don't know, maybe in some regions Diablo Immortal, well, those were co-developed by NetEase. You know, NetEase, the people who specifically are experienced in mobile. And yes, it is insane that COD Mobile and Warzone Mobile basically both exist. What's odd, though, is the lack of Microsoft's plan, because they said they wanted King as a part of their plan to run their own mobile store, which was supposed to launch in July, but uh, so far there is nothing. A quick note on Rumble then, because it is just the perfect example of a absolute, humongous, colossal waste of time for everyone involved, I would say. I played Rumble. My whole plan was to evaluate free-to-play, to find the grind, and then see how they dangle purchases over me, and then to buy some of those. I was going to do a video, but... Uh, 
I just couldn't be bothered anymore. Basically, the core game is pretty well designed, it's pretty sticky, but the lack of content and insane levels of grind are absolute deal breakers, and the content that is there is totally generic. It's just stuff in themed maps around zones that you know. There's no stories, there's no mini campaigns, the content cadence is pretty awful. I then compare that to what my friends who play Eastern Gacha games do, and uh, yeah, yeah, they definitely are squeezed for money, but my god, do they get a lot of content in return. Very much unlike Rumble, which just makes me think, these people, this team had no business building Rumble. Why was it greenlit in the first place? Were they just chasing for Hearthstone? But guess what? There's a grind that we can sell the solution for even harder. It just says to me that this whole thing was doomed from the start, and they did not have the in-house, well, chops to make a game like that good, and all that we the players got in return from that was staff moving away from games that we actually care about. And so with this cut we see that internal mobile game stonks are down, it's not just them, and to be honest with you, I think a lot of those internal mobile games were kind of massive wastes of time. It just sucks and those wastes of time also impact the people. Next, let's talk about staff and the who, because it's not just mobile games. We do not have a lot of public reveals here, but the few we've got are kind of telling. An encounter designer, a nine-year veteran on World of Warcraft, and certainly the new raid is fantastic, but there's a few little instances where I feel like more hands in deck would have been useful, so that's kind of sad to see. There's a senior talent marketer who said that most of her team were impacted, and I believe that was in the capacity of recruitment and that sort of thing. And then the story and franchise development team got hit again. And the wild thing is that department has struggled for ages to the point where it actually impacts Blizzard products. So Warcraft Chronicle Volume 4 was published full of errors and inconsistencies. And the point is, the story and franchise development team are the people who are supposed to fact check that, to keep it right, to help keep the developers on track with story. And we've continually heard from people who used to be on that team that it was understaffed and overtasked. Then we've seen a producer go on Rumble, an IT engineering manager of 17 plus years, along with further reports of engineers and recruiters being hit, but we know that via LinkedIn status is changing. And remember, whenever they say, whenever Phil says the majority are corporate and support roles, that's because they want you to think that they're trimming fat. Yet evidently, there's a veteran World of Warcraft encounter designer gone, and that's the thing. 650 people are gone. The majority may be corporate and support, but that could be 400, which would leave 250 frontline developers, and their statement would still be true. Now, I don't think that many frontline developers are gone, but I just want to bring up the point that any memo like that has got to be read with the utmost skepticism because... It's, uh, well, it's trying to sell you in their vision. Then there's the problem of definition. How the hell do you define those things? Corporate? Marketing? Stuff like that? I mean, games need to be marketed well. How often do we see shit marketing that misses the mark for IPs for brands that we care about? I mean, take the team that does Warcraft social media. They would be considered a support team. The insinuation is they're non-essential, and in a way, that's technically correct. If the Twitter account dies, WoW will survive. But what that team has done is totally overhaul World of Warcraft's social presence within just a few years, creating a far more, honestly, like, authentic feeling link with their community. So if you got rid of all those support people, guess what? You'd actually lose something pretty damn big that's high impact and that supports the game's health. And it's this type of gutting specific support and replacing it with generic support from Xbox Gaming that leads to stupid stuff like the FF14 thing, where basically, right, their system, which was all machine learning based, it was banning people because of free company. Hey, do you want some uh, free company in your area? Well, come down to my housing ward. <laughs> That's what they thought it was, which in fairness is uh, kind of what happens in that game. But basically, a free company is like a guild. People were getting banned because the bot thought it was solicitation, which is insane. You see, that's the big problem. Centralizing game support functions to Xbox generically means that specific game experience is lost, and that blows especially for the likes of Blizzard, where their customer service used to be renowned and so often were fellow turbo players of the games. But of course now, ticket times are far longer, and it's generally seen to be way worse, even though some individuals are still there trying. And that's not a surprise whole offices of customer service were axed. Take their Austin office that handled IT infrastructure. It's been ravaged multiple times, brutally so. Now, Microsoft are not wrong to see duplication in roles, but the thing is, that's duplication in job title. 
It's not necessarily duplication in detail. And it's the details that matter because those are the specifics of how you execute your job. But such is the case with mergers. Sometimes part of the value add is just cutting down duplication. And that is why Mr. Spencer says this. With these changes, our corporate and supporting teams and resources are aligned for sustainable future growth and can better support our studio teams and business units with programs and resources that can scale to meet their needs. Spoken like a true manager and not one who's dealing with the details. So, if you're a Blizzard, I am sure you're thrilled to start using Microsoft Teams and Azure DevOps. And of course, for you and me, it blows. Microsoft have put so much of their customer service over to chatbots. And look, for triage, I'm not against the chat. I mean, a chatbot with good RAG implementation is probably more useful than a standard FAQ to most people. But the thing is, those tools can be leaned on too hard, too early, by people who don't do the details themselves. Microsoft's bull case, in a way, is something I'm behind. The idea of automating drudgery. Take the butter-passing robot from Rick and Morty, right? Humans should be working in problems that require human intelligence and creativity. But here's the problem. It's such an easy argument to make at the C-suite level, but it's far harder to implement. And as anybody like me who has had the Dante of chatbots just juggle them for hours, well, not for hours, but you get the point, well, the tech ain't there yet. And here's the problem. These tools can be goddamn amazing. That's outside of games and say medical screening inside of games. Blizzard uses a machine learning tool to resize helms. That is an artist-led workflow improvement because nobody enjoys that. I use a AI augmented thing for spelling, grammar, and uh, custom checks that is leagues beyond Grammarly to the point where it can spell check Warcraft character names. My email client, Superhuman, it summarizes email chains super well and gives me context. Those things all rock. And they're great for the same reason the Blizzard's helm resizing is. It's user-driven because I know my job. I know what good looks like. I know how I work. I am sure that Satya Nadella, CEO of Microsoft, is lovely. Same for Phil. Absolutely. But they don't know how I work. They don't know how a frontline person doing CS on World of Warcraft works in specific World of Warcraft ways. By definition, they are not frontline. So when the AI tools get pushed down from the top, especially at a company with tens of thousands of staff, it is not like you or me finding a tool and using it. Does Satya sit down and work customer service once a month so he understands what that team's doing? Does Phil shadow a mid-level producer on Warcraft so he understands what those people are doing? No, they're too large for that as an organization. And that means the leaders can be out of touch. And that means when we think about the layoffs, when we think about the automation, it all just kind of begs a question with these staff. Why did the flurry of unionization at ABK not protect people? Well, the answer is the parent union, Communication Workers of America, can't actually do much about this right now, other than a harsh statement. The reason why, though, is maybe not what you think. It's because none of the people who got laid off were under one of their unions, which is exactly what happened during the last far larger round of layoffs at ABK. Microsoft is a gigacorp that does not care about you. Act accordingly. And next, Ubisoft are in pretty deep trouble that threatens the founding family's finances directly, and you can check it out next.